study meeting at, I think I'm a minute off, a couple minutes, 8.15. Um, all right, welcome to the January 17th, 2024 study session of Livonia City Council. We will start tonight's study meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilman Rob Donovic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Donovic. Good evening. This meeting sets the agenda for the 1,985th regular meeting, which is a voting meeting that will take place on Monday, January 29th, where tonight's meetings will be officially voted on. Uh, looking at this, we are sitting with six present with Scott Morgan, Councilman Scott Morgan, uh, off on personal business. Um, we're going to move right into the council has set aside 30 minutes for audience communication for items not on the study agenda. Do we have any audience communications for any items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none, we're going to move on. Do we have any council updates or anything wise from the council? Nothing? Well, Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. Uh, you may want to explain why some of us are dressed the way I are. They, we are, especially uh, Councilwoman Passionate, or Tashnick, because after all, she's wearing uh, a U of M shirt because her daughter's in the dentistry school over there, but she <laughs> did go to Michigan State, so I'm really admiring her now. More than ever, thank you for wearing that Go Blue shirt. It paid my tuition, and I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Ms. Tashnick. If I may respond yes. to Ms. Toy. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think I'm breaking out in hives, like <laughs> blue and gold together, but um, <laughs> plenty of my dollars have gone to Michigan as well, since my daughter, as you stated, yes, is in dental yes. school there. But yes, I am a proud grad of Michigan State, and I am playing along tonight, but even though uh, I am a proud alum of Michigan State, uh, congratulations to Michigan on their national championship. Go Lions. Go Lions. Go Lions. Go Lions. Go Lions. Go Lions. <laughs> All right. Any other council communication? All right. Seeing none. Let's dive right into the uh, into the study agenda. Under new business, number one is a request to waive the driveway ordinance requirement. And this is brought to us from Kunal Bindra to waive the city ordinance 12.04.205, one curb cut for a maximum of 25 feet to 27 feet. This is Mr. Zelensic? Yes. Yes, you can come up, sir. Uh, this is a uh, issue over on Linden Park. The gentleman uh, has a new uh, residence there. And uh, as you know, our ordinance requires no more than 25 feet. Unfortunately, the gentleman has a driveway that's 27 feet. As, as you're aware, when we have water main breaks, uh, we want to make sure that um, if there is a problem, uh, for one, that uh, they don't bury any utilities that we need to get access to, whether it's a sanitary manhole or a water shutoff valve or a gas valve. The second thing is if... If we allow one person to do it, then obviously there's concerns with you know, replacing that concrete in the future uh, as taxpayers. But I'll let the gentleman explain his condition and then let you guys uh, hear the information and we can discuss in further detail if you have any questions on my part. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zelensky. Council, if you don't mind, I'm going to go right to the petitioner, Mr. Bindra. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, name and address for the record, if we could. Okay, uh, Kunal Bindra, and I'm at 14428 Dooley Drive in Livonia, Michigan. Um, so when I moved into my house, I didn't know the driveway was going to be so tight. So, like, when I parked both of my vehicles on that driveway, like, I'm opening my door barely, and I'm, dent I'm like, hitting into my other car door. So that's the reason I wanted to like extend my driveway, like widen it out a little bit so I could just move my truck into the corner and just be easy so I can get my tools in and out of the garage because I do contracting work, so I need to be able to put my equipment in. I can't fit my truck in the garage either because I have toolboxes. I got a lot of stuff filled in there. So the contractor I got to do the work, he told me that he got the permits through the city, but apparently he did not because I'm getting these letters in the mail, so... I'm just asking if I can get this waived. Well, thank you. Uh, do I have direction? any direction from Council, Mr. Donovic? Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Zielinczyk, I think a similar situation happened in another new construction neighborhood this uh, last year where a new homeowner uh, 
bought a home and extended their approach and they thought that the contractor pulled the appropriate permits and, and did not. So this would be like the second time it's happened most recently. That is correct. That was on Mason. But uh, in this instance, again, I'd recommend that the homeowner or the contractor come pull the permit, which is a $35 processing fee and a $50 approach fee for us to confirm. Obviously, we want to make sure we protect the homeowner, make sure it's six inches thick. And second of all, we want to make sure he doesn't bury any sanitary, water, or shutoff valves that are critical to our infrastructure to maintain. And that's what we'd ask for the city council uh, to consider if, if they want to approve the uh, different extension for two feet. Uh, Mr. Zolensik, so part of that permitting process, why it's so important that the contractor still come out and get that permit is because one of the things you mentioned, you want to confirm that the concrete where the driveway is will be at least six inches deep because, of course, the heavier vehicles that normally aren't on sidewalks. Correct. And, of course, to your point, making sure that's not covering up any sort of pipes and, and whatnot underneath. So if I'm making a motion um, for an approving, would I have to include in that motion that the petitioner or the resident get that permit? Or how would I logistically do that? He has to have a permit because it's a violation of our ordinance if he doesn't, and he's subject to possibly getting charged with a violation on that. No matter what council, if the council approves it or disapproves it, he, whether the council approves it or doesn't approve it, he still has to get a permit. Right. Okay, so what we're doing is approving the, or waiving the 25-foot lot requirement and, and making it with requirement and allowing it to extend to 27-foot, but the resident still has to get the permit. Correct. Mr. Councilman Jolly. Uh, so, Mr. Zelensky, is this driveway already poured? That is correct. Okay. He, he said he thought the his original contractor that widened the driveway um, did not pull a permit, but we would if we would have inspected it, we told him, hey, it's not 25 feet. We need to come to city council prior to approval or waited to, to pour that driveway itself. Again, we have 38,000 homes. Um, obviously, people uh, may widen their driveway. We've got to make sure we protect the taxpayers from a future water main break where you have to come keep replacing these driveways. I don't think two foot's exceptional that much, but again, we want to make sure that we, sh we hold the line so it doesn't creep as far as additional people just going out willy-nilly to widen their driveways. We want to make sure that there's a standard itself. Um, maybe for new homes or the third car garage, the city council may want to look at widening the ordinance change ordinance to a, a, a 29, 28 feet, whatever, but at this particular case, new home, unfortunately the homeowner had the contractor do the work, didn't pull a permit. We just want to make sure um, this is the second case in my 15 year history that this has come before city council. We want to make sure you guys are the uh, final say uh, to meet the ordinance. Um, well, I appreciate that. And I'm also concerned in regards to this. You know, people don't care about the rules until they get caught violating the rules. And I'm not speaking about you in particular on that. Mr. Bernier, are we doing anything to contractors who are doing this, who are performing work without performing? without pulling the appropriate permits? Because that's, you know what? I think, I think Mr. Zolensik would be the better person to answer that question, but I know we have had a few cases in the court dealing with people who haven't pulled permits. Some of them were contractors, but most of the time we've seen it, that I've seen it in the court, it's been the individual homeowner who's done it themselves without pulling the permit. The ones that I've seen, it's very rare that I see in the court it gets that far where it's the contractor. But I think Mr. Zelensky is better to answer that question than I am. The president, basically what happens is we double the fines. If the person doesn't pull the permit and we find out, we will make sure they double the fines on that particular location. If it comes to be a particular problem, we work with the law department to send a, a notice letter as a courtesy. Then we will look at prosecuting them for a $500 fine and a misdemeanor. We haven't gone to that extreme. But after the second letter through the law department, making sure that they are well aware of that they don't do this again, they will be prosecuted after doubling the fines. So we've, we take it to extreme, uh, but again, the third third issue would be to work with the law department then to have a misdemeanor and a $500 fine if they continue. So in this current case, is is there a fine that's been... We, we would just work with the city council. Again, it's two feet. It's not like it's 10 feet, but I would make the resident or the contractor come pull the permit to make sure, again, we protect ourselves from any... Hopefully there's no buried utilities, but I don't think there is come pull the permit, that way we can confirm just a visual, maybe the contractor or the homeowner will uh, look at the thickness, make sure it's six inches thick, and then and then go from there. Again, there, there's several, the contractors that do business in Livonia, pull the permits, they know the standard. I don't know who the contractor he hired, they're one-offs or could be a family friend, but again, the people that we catch, we make them go pull a permit and double the fines is typically what happens. Okay, so, and not to belabor this, but in terms of the process here, 
I would feel more comfortable approving this waiver and the additional two feet here if those steps that you just detailed had happened beforehand. So you could tell us that, listen, at this point he did pull the permit. At this point we did have an inspector go out there. And even though it was done out of sequence and, and it technically is a violation of the ordinance, we're okay with this now, but we could hear that from you as the expert. See, it seems a little disjointed, like we potentially provide the waiver now, mm -hmm. but then the inspector goes out there, we find problems with it, but then he has the waiver, so it's all done, every step's done backwards, to be honest with you. Correct. The only reason why we found this is because we were out there looking at other houses for grade inspection, we found that this thing was widened, yeah. even though he thought he had the contract to pull permit, otherwise we wouldn't have known. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. No, and I'm not, it's, I'm just talking, in terms of sure. best processes practices. here, practices, process. You know, listen, at this point, I'll offer an approving for it, for the regular, but I would like the permit pulled before we vote on it, and I'd like the inspector out there to tell us whether or not there's any utilities that are under there before we do this as well. Because if it's done and there's utilities, I'm not going to vote for it. So. Agreed 100%. All right. Vice President? Um, through the chair to Mr. Zelensic, I, I'm looking at the pictures. Was the sidewalk replaced as well, or just the driveway around the sidewalk? When, it, when the plot plan was approved, he originally had a, his driveway and the, and the, and the uh, private driveway above was, was completed. We approved mm -hmm. it again. You know, how Homer moves in, obviously, you know, gets acclimated to the area and what his driveway is, and then, it, it, you know, has somebody else come wind the driveway. So that was added. The above... Uh, um, uh, driveway was widened and typically the approach was widened and one of the rules we have typically is we make sure that the sidewalk on either side of the driveway is six inches thick because right. now if they drive on the sidewalk which normally was four inches thick it should be six inches thick and then he has a problem if it cracks and then ultimately the homeowner uh, is responsible for that but if he sells a house and it right. cracks and, and over time um, we only have a construction season from April to November to fix those sidewalks and he gets you know there's an SAD process you'll find out from 2024 sidewalk program you got February to, to, to uh, let the homeowner know the address and then they have to fix it by November then we build in the following year so it's a long process but as you stated we want to make sure that they are held to the, to the correct standards so that way we don't have a trip and fall a liability issue but as, as uh, Mr. Jolly Councilman Jolly says the best thing is to make sure they pulls permit we get the inspection everything's a clean bill of health and then that way City Council can approve it or deny it at the regular meeting can we can we make a condition to making it six inches then on the sidewalk Part if we would, or they wouldn't approve. I mean, I guess the permit wouldn't go through. Right? Sidewalks would be four. The approach would be six. But if it's part of the driveway, if it's part of the driveway, it'd be it six inches thick. Right. Yeah, and that's the problem because. And with that one, Mr. Zelinsic, if I may, that that sidewalk would have been inspected when the CFO was given on the house, correct? That sidewalk most likely is six inches thick, but okay. technically the one adjacent to it should be six inches thick in case. But yes. we will take a look at that, and make sure we are okay. in compliance, make sure City Council is all we're all in agreement that that should Perfect. be correct. Uh, to protect the liability and the integrity of of the sidewalk not only for the residents that, that walk there but also for future uh, use uh, to make sure it, again it, it upholds what we intended thank you mr zelensic uh council any further discussion yeah can i if i yes make sure you take care of this the sooner the better our next meeting's in two weeks and if it's all on the up and up we'll go okay. from there if not it's gonna be a bigger issue yeah, Monday, January 29th. So there's an approval on the regular, which means we do want to see you back on January 29th with the uh, the permit and then with our inspection department, making sure that obviously that sidewalk and uh, approach apron is indeed six inches. Um, and then one last thing, Mr. Zelink, if I'm reading right, there was no curb cuts. That was that rolling curb into the driveway, correct? Yeah, we have the uh, four-inch roll curb that's uh, throughout the whole subdivision. So it's just a matter of the, the approach widening uh, exceeding 25 feet and make sure the sidewalk is six inches thick. Perfect. So a little, little work and we'll see you back uh, in a couple weeks. Okay, so just so I get this right, do I contact like the engineering department to come out and they... Mr. Zelensic would probably be your subject matter expert. Okay. Just come back to 12973 Farmington Road from 8 to 5 or 8 to 430, come pull a permit. Uh, we'll be happy to send the inspector out there and make sure we're all set on that, on that uh, permit for okay. working the right way. That sounds Home, fine. Homeowner can come pull the permit. On January 29th? January 29th, 8 7 p.m. will be the regular. You'll be on that agenda. Okay. So hopefully we'll see you at 7 p.m. on the 29th. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there any audience comment on that item?
Seeing none, we're gonna move on to item number two, which is a request to approve location and schedule of dates and times for the 2024 Board of Review meetings as well as the compensation rates for members. Um, this is gonna be coming to us, oh, right here. How are you, sir? Good, how about you? Good. Uh, for people I haven't met, Jake Liberati, Assistant City Assessor. Um, I'm just here for the annual renewal of the board pay as well as the board review schedule in March. Um, sure. Ms. Toy? I will offer an approving on this. This is basically housekeeping, other than if you're giving everybody big raises. No, okay. Are you cool on consent? Yes, please. All right, you're, you have an approving on consent. Is there any discussion further for council? Seeing none. Any audience? Seeing none. If you want to come back on the 29th, we'll be here. <laughs> That's okay. I'll watch from home. <laughs> Have a good one. Moving on to item number three, which is a request to approve hourly rate increases from the Department of Civil Service for the classifications of high school co-op, college co-op, and seasonal clerk. Ms. Leibel, how are you? It's great to see you all again. Good evening, City Council. I'm Janine Leibel, your HR, uh, your HR director. Pardon me. Um, I'm here to request that we um, that you approve our change in wages. Um, Michigan min minimum wage went up on January 1st, 2024. It went up from 1010 to 1033. Um, to keep compliant, the city is asking that you approve our minimum wage for 1035. Uh, that's for three position, three classifications within the city, high school co-op, college co-op, and seasonal clerk. They're not um, typically used classifications. They're pretty sporadically used, I should say. Uh, we have only one person that falls within either any of those classifications. It's a college co-op um, employee that we have. So it, it's not a well-utilized uh, classification, and typically our starting rates are better than um, our minimum rate, but we'd like to keep it compliant with state law. Mr. Jolly? Yeah, thank you, Ms. Leibel. Um, this is a, a no-brainer to do this, obviously, but something else that came up that I just want to mention to you really quickly. So my full-time employer is a university, right? And I know through recent conversations that I've had there that my employer is trying to find other municipal partners and places like us to find places for federal work study students to work. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Davis as well, I know the, some of those are looking at working at the Hawk and other places. <coughs> this seems like this would be essentially free labor for us um, in many ways. I don't know if we're pursuing that, so I just want to put that out there because it's kind of closely related to this. I very much appreciate that suggestion and we'll look forward to- We do uh, have some colleges here that might be good partners. giving you that update. We absolutely would love to partner with all of our local colleges. Thank you. I'll offer an approving for consent. Thank you. Thank you. We have an approving for consent. Any other council communications on this matter? Seeing none. Any audience? Seeing none. You have an approving on consent? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We're going to move on to item number four, which is award of bid from the Department of Community Resources for the printing of the City of Livonia's 2024 Connections Magazine from budgeted funds. Ms. Good Hussons, how are you? Hi. Good evening, Council. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Kristen Houchins. I'm the new Director of Communications and Community Resources. Um, I'm here tonight to ask you to approve our award of bid for our Connections Magazine. Um, we're using Hearst again. This will be um, our third year with Hearst. They're a great partner. They've done some great work. Um, and it's, very, it's a very easy um, relationship with them. Um, it's from budgeted funds. Uh, we put the contract out for bid in the fall, and um, Hearst was the lowest bidder. Um, we are looking to add a couple more glossy pages and therefore add um, some more city services um, pages and information to the, to the magazine. Awesome. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Donovic. And Thanks, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I know you mentioned briefly some of the changes will be adding additional glossy pages. Is there any other changes to the magazine that we can expect this year? And how many times do you expect to send out magazines this year to residents? Yep. We're, um, three times this year. We do a spring summer that's uh, currently in process. It'll go out late March, a summer fall edition in late July, and then the winter 2024, 2025 in November. So three, three every year. Um, the glossy pages are going to be on the city side. The Parks and Rec pages will stay the same. It'll just allow us to give more information on um, things on DPW, uh, ordinance, 
Um, we've been doing a lot of features, but we've been finding we need to add some more back in about just regular day-to-day -day services that we offer. Awesome. And then uh, what other magazines are there in our community right now that the city would be paying for? Is it this, just this one? Just this one, because it's a combined city magazine and Parks and Rec. We combined it three years ago. Right, and then the senior bulletin is that's handled by the senior center? or um, Communications actually designs it um, and sends it over to the senior center, and they put it out. They have a contract with a L LPI, I believe, is the company. Great. I just know at one point, and I think the city has since cleaned it up, but there was different magazines, and there was some discussion in the past, so if anyone's still confused, we'll just have one magazine just one. with both the city and Parks and Rec. Correct. In that, uh, there, is a, there is a Livonia today that's completely separate from us. And that's separate. That's privately owned. That's privately owned and, and funded. It's not city owned. But it does go to every um, uh, residence in Livonia as well. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. Ms. Toy? If I may, I'd like to offer an approving on consent, um, and I'd also like to congratulate you, Kristen. Thank You've you. been with the city a long, not a long time, but Almost long years. enough, right? <laughs> Almost um, seven years. So much congratulations you. to you, and um, you're more than capable, and all the extracurricular things you do for our employees and within, you know, City Hall and elsewhere, we really appreciate that. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You got a promotion, and you're... Your reward was to come to more city council. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. I'll take it. It sounds like a good bonus. <laughs> I just want to confirm that the one of the glossy pages was the full page uh, spread of Rob Donovic. Is that true? Because <laughs> um, I know that that was part of Let me check the schedule on that one. All right. That might be the summer edition. <laughs> and where exactly would that be positioned in the... <laughs> as long as you get my good side with my nice hair. <laughs> Right, Make sure yeah. you get Councilman Jolly's hair in that edition too, please. Oh, oh. Oh. That's, uh, that's one of the glossy pages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have an approving on consent. Thank you very you much. If you want to join us on the 29th, we'll be here. Wonderful. Thank you, Council. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number five, which is a request for authorization to waive the sealed bid process and purchase from a sole source, source provider from the Department of Information Systems for the purchase of a ThinkPad or ThinkGuard backup and disaster recovery solution for a period of three years in an amount not to exceed $53,114,040 annually from budgeted funds. Good evening, Council. How are you? Good. Um, this proposal is for a backup and disaster recovery as a service solution provided by ThinkGuard. ThinkGuard is a unique company that specializes only in data protection and included in their service uh, would be a 48 terabyte on-site appliance for regular backup locally, unlimited cloud storage to replicate our local data too, uh, regular backup testing and verification for data integrity, a formal disaster recovery plan to follow in case of an event, the ability to turn up city systems from the cloud in the event of a data breach or natural disaster, and hands-on engineering assistance during such emergencies to assist the city in getting its systems back up and running. ThinkGuard has proposed their solution to the city for three years and provided a 10% discount over their normal service fees. Because the solution contributes to our cybersecurity resilience, 50% of the cost is eligible for a wrap grant through the city's to ensure MMRMA. Uh, this one solution checks off many boxes to ensure our city's data remains safe and secure. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Casey. Do I have direction from Council? Mr. Chair. Vice President? Um, Thank you for explaining all that to us. Uh, as a fellow nerd, I found that very entertaining. <laughs> um, no, I'd be happy to offer approval and consent. All right. Any uh, more communication from council? Seeing none. Audience? Seeing none. Casey, you got to approve on consent. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item number six, which is an award of bid from the Department of Parks and Recreation for a purchase of calcium um, chlorine, I'm just going to go with that, for the Kirksky Recreation Center Pools, Botsford Pool, Clement Circle Pool, and Sheldon Pool from budgeted funds. I've never met you before. What's your Hi. name? Hi. <laughs> Ted Davis representing Parks and Recreation up department with the city of Livonia. Uh, <laughs> just because we said before, the city and Parks and Recreation, like we're two separate entities, we are not, unfortunately. I am part of the city. I am here in front of council. Uh, we are asking for the council to uh, approve our chlorine bid, and you are right, it's calcium hypochlorite, it's uh, granular, it's tabulate form. Um, we're getting new feeders as part of this bid, price per pound, 313, that was the only bid we received. We're asking council to approve this. <clears throat> I'm happy to answer any questions you might have on this. Council? So moved. 
Is I'm that consent. on consent? On consent, yeah. It's housekeeping. All right. Any other discussion from council? Seeing none. Audience? I'm going to hold on this one because I think there's a lot of people waiting for this one. I, I, this, Seeing is none. A, this is a hot button issue. You're rushing. Mr. Davis, you have an approving on consent. Thank you very much. And we're going to finish it off with number seven, which is a request for authorization to waive the sealed bid process and purchase from a sole source provider from the Department of Parks and Rec for a bunch of pesticide, herbicide, fertilizer needed for the 2024 golf season to maintain Fox Creek, Whispering Willows, and Idlewild golf courses. This is a fun one. This is another fun one. Thank you again, Council President McCullough, Ted Davis representing Parks and Recreation. This is another housekeeping issue. Every year we purchase these supplies. Um, this is the first year actually we've been required to come before council for it. Um, these are proprietary mixes, so it's not the fertilizer you get at Ace Hardware or Home Depot. These are specific for golf courses. We like this particular brand. I have TJW staff and Parks and Recreation staff, Doug Ware representing uh, the golf courses as a Parks and Rec employee. And, Tom Welsh, Terry Welsh, Ryan Yoder are here as well. I'm sure they would be happy to come down to the podium and speak on this topic. We should this send them down here. If yeah, there are any should. questions. One of those guys come I, down. You know what? They, this is like their one shot a year where they're going to be here. So do you guys, come on down, guys. Do you want to at least just get on the record? Yeah. All right. Well, while this is happening, well, what's, what's wrong with my golf swing, <laughs> Miss Toy? I don't know. If, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer that question. Um, Everything. My question was going to be, Mr. Davis and others, will this make our balls go longer, these <laughs> kinds of things? And See, these are the questions that I ask these gentlemen behind me and say, why are the, are the cups not bigger? And, yes. you know, why yeah. are the holes so long? And I'm going to let these gentlemen answer that question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, come on up. Guys, you guys do a remarkable job, honestly. We have world-class golf courses, and, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. So kudos to you guys. Um, you guys got five minutes apiece, if that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that much at all. Uh, I'm Doug Ware. I'm the uh, golf course superintendent. Greenskeeper, too, is my title. Um, I've been with the city for 23 years. Um, lived here for a long time, too, so grew up here. Um, uh, yeah, we're, I'm happy to, to do it for everybody. It's, it's very enjoyable. It's, uh, it's not always easy, but, um, I'm happy that people are happy with the products that we're, that we're putting out there. So, um, I appreciate it. Mr. President, Mr. Donovic. So we're spending, we're spending roughly $96,000 in fertilizer. Correct. What does the fertilizer do? Uh, so <laughs> it's weekly applications on greens, um, of foliar fertilizer, um, and fungicides, um, throughout the season on all three golf courses. Um, so, uh, covering the, it's all usually on the fine, like the, the closely mown turf. So tees, greens, fairways, um, but that's, you know, fairways are done three or four, uh, probably about maybe six times a year along with tees. Greens are, you know, weekly, um, so is there's. And nothing's cheap anymore. So we so. take really good care of our golf courses. Correct. And, and we get this it, we get this money back because they're so heavily played by bad golfers like myself. Mm -hmm. And my and I'm included in that group. So <laughs> um, yes, yeah. So usually when what we what we put into or get from the, the from play pays for all of this. So it's it's usually covered and taken care of. And um, you know my my staff does a great job of. Of keeping it nice for everybody. That's awesome. Thank you, sir. Vice President. Um, I just have a quick question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, does this include the algicide for the ponds? Um, no, we we do reserve some things throughout the year to to purchase things if we happen to need them. Um, okay. These are these items are things that we're going to use no matter what every year, um, so that we usually leave some left in the budget to purchase things like algicides or some herbicides, some things just to fill in the gaps here and there. Because I need a better algicide. I can't find my balls when they go in the lake. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, actually, no. I, I'll, I'll put you guys out of your misery. I'd be happy to offer approving on consent. <laughs> there we go. So you got to improve on consent. Now it's, now now it's a party. Now we got to get Welsh up here. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tom's got to come I mean, on. Feel free to chime in. Yeah. yeah. There he now is. that all the uh, smoke is cleared, then they throw me in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, it's, it's our privilege to uh, uh, maintain the golf courses. I've been there, uh, be my 46th year. And uh, so I'm the shining example of how bad you can be and still be a city employee. <laughs> but, but we appreciate all the support we get from the Parks and Rec Department and the Finance Department and the City Council. Uh, 
makes our job a lot easier because we have partners uh, with the city and uh, it, it works pretty well. It's, uh, it's kind of a unique situation and uh, we think it, it's worked pretty well for us, but we have your support and that's the main thing that, that we need. Not only you're paying your greens fees and chopping up the golf course, but uh, <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, it's it, it is our privilege to do that, and and we're privileged privileged to have Doug, um, our, our superintendent, and uh, Ryan Yoder, our finance guy, and Terry Welsh is the pro at uh, um, Idlewild. So we try to keep those things moving, and we're the only city of our size that has three 18-hole golf courses mm -hmm. that that are you know. Uh, self-sustaining and not costing the city any money and providing a, uh, a, a great activity for, for our residents. And that's our mission is to make sure they're happy with our golf courses. And uh, like I said, uh, happy new year, new year to all you and I hope you have a great year and uh, we appreciate you seeing you on the golf course. Thank you. Ms. Toy? I, you know, on another note, this is what homegrown people are like in Livonia. Uh, Mr. Walsh and my father worked together at the 16th District Court and we're two of the craziest guys on earth, and you can see how they follow in the footsteps uh, <laughs> as well. And Mr. Weir there, Mr. Doug Weir, his mother was our senior director for many years. His sister now works for the city as well. And um, what a fabulous family as well. And it just shows you as we go through the different stages, you guys are much too young to remember these things, but um, in all seriousness, you know, it, it's just, for me, it's, kind of cool seeing that come full circle and uh, they lead by a nice example and we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. I wanted to share that so that when you start playing tricks, we know, Tom. I just, I just, I know it's a, usually you guys asking the questions, Terry <laughs> Welsh just following uh, in the footsteps, but we talked about the, the glossy pages uh, and Mr. Jolly, I know that you wanted one of those pages. Could we also get a page Glossy for Mr. Davis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be like a dual spread. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was my only thing. Where'd you go to high school? Nova High School. Oh, no, but I'm no. a Michigan State guy, and I've been with Livonia for probably 23 years now. Well, yeah. Going back to high school. Love it. Awesome. You guys are all rock stars. We appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And you know what? With it being negative two out, and knowing that uh, we're approving. The stuff to do preventative maintenance on our courses is awesome. So thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions from Council? We have a consent. Audience, any communication on that? Seeing none. Move. Safely so six. Let her, let her say it. Say it. It's your, it's your but I, you don't move to adjourn on a study. Just say it. I mean, say it's... It. Uh, okay, I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> All right. Good night, Livonia. Go Lions. Go Lions. Stay warm. Stay warm. <laughs>